Hello, everybody. <clears throat> now, remember, I might not be able to talk all the time because my jaw is still hurting when I talk for too long. Hi, Debra. Hi, Cecile. So, the idea is to make things for decorating Easter eggs or making Easter eggs. Uh, so, generally speaking, let's talk about first making some canes. I know some of you have expressed the desire of making um, the stripy chevron type thing. So, let's get on it. Hi, Angel. One of the one of the combinations I really really love. Oh, whisper move. I'm sorry. I have a whisper here. I'm sorry for that. All right, who's here? Hi, Fran. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Vanessa. So, one of the, let's go with the combinations of colors. If we want to be all, you know, I'm not going to go into making pisanki like eggs because that's very complicated. So, um, let's go with the simpler stuff. Oh my goodness, and you're awake. Thank you. That's really touching. Uh, I don't really have often people from Australia for my lives. So what I am using is actually the, it's everything is primo. This is the sunshine. Uh, then I have the wisteria and hold on, what is this? I lost my track. Okay, this is actually souffle, so 80s. <laughs> so, one of the things that we need to always keep in mind whenever mixing stops, and this is, I said, this is pistachio, um, just because I don't have any primo color in the, the pink. One of the things that I said uh, before, whenever you're making canes and you mix two different types of, uh, two different brands of clay, it's going to affect the way that your cane moves because different brands of clay uh, move differently. Even when it comes to clays that are made by the same company, like is the case with Souffle and Primo, Souffle moves differently than Primo in a cane. So what you want to do is to bring them a little bit to the same, um, uh, closer to the same type of moving. So um, made at home, I je pas ton nom. Uh, so. I'm going to actually mix a little bit of Primo translucent in it. And uh, I know Cecile is here, so she might want to translate from time to time. I'll say it real quick in French. Donc, on va, ne on va pas faire des, des œufs de pas compliqués avec tous les, les choses de, de l'Europe de, de l'Est, mais on va faire des, des œufs de Pâques, euh, ensemble des œufs de, de Pâques qui sont euh, avec des couleurs joyeuses. Et j'ai ici du, du primo, mais celui-ci, c'est du soufflé. Et ce que j'ai dit before, c'est que lorsqu'on fait une canne, on doit toujours utiliser euh, euh, le même euh, type de, de pâte polymère parce que sinon, ils vont euh, mouvoir dans la canne euh, différemment. Donc ici, parce que j'ai du soufflé et j'ai du primo, je vais euh, mixer un peu de euh, primo translucide dans le soufflé tout le, pour, pour le le prendre au même, au même uh, mouvement. So, 
<laughs> Bonjour. Bonjour. Hi, Lawrence. So let me grab a pinch of translucent. And don't go too far with the translucent. You don't even have to go half and half. I would usually go about a quarter, so just eyeballing it. I'm going to mix about a quarter of this. Right? So it's going to be noisy for a little bit, but this thing goes fast. <laughs> Okay, and as you can see, it didn't really change the color or the texture. Hi, Carol. So you managed to. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you didn't. <laughs> Hi, Colleen. So you want to do first the striped cane so we can see how we can mix that with other stuff. Let's see, how would it work the best? We can do, for example, these two and these two, or this and this, or this and this. But let's do actually a mix. And I'll show you how you can en enhance the, the look of a stripe cane. So I decided to go for the stripes with the wisteria and the pistachio. And so they are on the thickest setting, okay? And I am going to cut, actually I'm going to need two. I should have made this bigger. <laughs> I will be using the wisteria as the base. And I am using, as you can see, three squares. Now remember, always use the same cutter and when you're measuring the same thickness. But in this case, I am not really, I'm measuring so I can get the sizing I'm going to just stack these up with a lot of care so that I don't trap air and if I didn't notice anybody in chat to say hi by name I'm sorry okay so I have a stack of three thicker settings right and I'm going to actually cut one more time to make sure that my square is nice and equal so I don't have problems with it moving and distorting as I start Now, we shall make the stripe with the pistachio, but with a twist. So I'm going to cut one square of the pistachio, and then I'm going to put the sunshine through the one thin setting, not the thinnest on my machine, because that's super thin. <laughs> Let's 
So the Atlas has like 10 settings and I used the seven. So that would be the second thinnest. And I'm going to cut, actually I'll show you a trick because whenever the, the clay is this thin, it can present some issues when you're trying to adhere it to another piece. So what I'm going to do is actually, let me try and get this closer so you can see better what I'm doing. So see, I'm placing this at an angle like this. And I'm going to gently start bringing it down. And this way I know that I don't have air bubbles. Then I'll use the cutter again. And I know it's going to have a little bit of stuff here, but that's fine. I and mean, even if you are going to end with a little bit of scrap, that's fine. They are still happy colors that you can use. Well, we are going to make some leaves out of them. Also to decorate eggs. And then I will be doing the same thing on the other side. So again, I have this. I'm going this time to bend it the other way. Get it close and then start gently burnishing with my finger. And at this point, I can just lift this other one. Again, use my cutter and lift the whole thing. And now you see how pretty I have the whole thing sandwiched. Let me get this back where it belongs. And now we can get these together. So what happens at this point is that that sunshine yellow is going to enhance the look of the pistachio. Yeah, because you know, it took me a while to come up with this, Carol, because um, for a long time, I just kept getting all these air bubbles and I just had to pop them out every time. And by the way, I hope that uh, you enjoyed in the, the last uh, full Larimar, I showed you how to avoid, uh, how to eliminate the uh, placking, the air bubbles in the translucent when you condition it. Donc, le, le sunshine va uh, mettre um, en valeur le pistachio. So even if it's this thin, it's going to still bring it a lot forward. And now we want to do a really, really good job at cutting it in two. So I'm going to notch it here. And then notch it here. And hopefully do a good cut. As you know, I always have issues cutting under the camera. And now all we can do is to Now it's up to you if you want to put the the wisteria in 
two or in three. It's entirely up to you. Yeah, if you go on my website, uh, I posted on the part though, and actually should be featured on the first page. There are two ways to handle handle that with Pardo. The first way works only with Pardo, doesn't work with Primo, but the second way, the one that I showed in the full RMR works with Primo as well. Okay, now we start gently reducing it because we need the We need to stack it again. So we need to reduce these and make it longer. And uh, by the way, I've never shown you, I forgot to make a little presentation video on my Facebook page. The awesome stuff, the awesome brooches me and my sponsors did. <laughs> brooches, I always say brooches, I have no idea why. So, look at this. We had uh, a live a couple of weeks ago when I was still able to talk a lot on making brooches, but there's one more thing that I wanted to show you, and that's the, the main thing. And the other, and I'm saying it now, I'm interrupting and saying it now because if I don't, I'll forget, okay? Uh, uh, the other brooch we made was this one. And this just made with my uh, rose cane. That's not even my rose cane. I mean, it's been for so long around around the internet. I have no idea who came up with it. Uh, but anyway, so initially when um, I made this brooch, I used my uh, blend of, uh, of clay that I use for doing uh, German silver so I don't have to antique. And then I use some of the German silver um, gilders paste. But then one of the cosmic shimmers uh, that I had pre-ordered from Polyclay Play came. And I used it and I wanted to show it to you because I will be doing a, a piece of the review soon. I'm just waiting for the silver to come to with my next order. But this is it. It's a metallic gilding polish. And uh, it's called Cosmic Shimmer. But what I love the best about it, number one, look at the metal look on this thing. Trying to try to see. Look at the metal look on this thing. It's absolutely fantabulous. Here I put a little bit too much. <laughs> I was still trying to figure out how to use it. Okay. But the neatest part about it, so... And I saw a video done by Polymer Clay TV on how to use it with silk screens. And I'm going to get some silk screens of Mike Brails that Trish has now and do a, a demo with them. And they did a demo with using this on silk screens, but I used it as a polish. And the thing is that, okay, you open it normally, like when you can open it. Uh, uh. Okay, that's my hands, that's not the jar. So you open it like any other thing. But the deal is that it's got an absolutely fantabulous applicator. See, and you can open it, then dab this in, and then close it without the fear that your stuff will dry out while you're working with it. The deal is that you have first to moisten the, the sponge and put a little bit of uh, a liquid soap and then dab it. But it makes things so easy to use and it goes just perfectly over all the raised areas and comes up with this awesome thing. So uh, as soon as I get the silver one, I will make a review and tutorial on it because this is what I wanted to tell you about and I didn't want to forget. Okay, so let's get back, get back on reducing this. And there's a few other things that I have in my uh, 
on my list here and as I started to catch up with everything else on the website, I, I'll be able to start working on them. Because there's a few uh, demos on how to use certain products and the review, for example, on uh, obtaining the perfect silver metal finish. I managed to gather a lot of silver stuff. So it will be on the silver. And hopefully in time I'll get more stuff on other metals as well. But I had promised you to make you several uh, tutorials on how to obtain different metals. Looks with more or less expensive stuff. Now, remember what I've been showing you in my cane uh, basic 101 thing to reduce. The best thing is to press it a little bit against your working table. Bonsoir, Dominique. So I think that it's fairly extended and I can proceed to reduce it some more yeah because i have a good number here so it's at five centimeters so i'm going to go for a Yeah, I love metal finishes too. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I was looking for my little acrylic block. I'm telling you, this little acrylic block is my workhorse, the same as that blue paintbrush, <laughs> blue handle paintbrush. Okay, so we want to go mostly this way, but but the idea is to get it squarish like this. And then we are going to try and do a chevron stripe. And don't let it move that way too much. So from time to time, butt it against the table. Good night, Fran. And thank you for being here. Okay, at this point, it's almost there. So at this point, honestly, I think I'm going to make it a little bit flatter because it's a little bit too small to show you entirely what I want to show you. And because there is a way of uh, getting the diagonally striped stuff that's practically shown in all the our four fathers, fathers, polymer clay books and it's not hard at all to to achieve now remember if you do this in primo or in kato it will be much uh, hi judy uh it will be much easier to hi anna uh to maintain your uh, lines perfectly perfectly straight both the souffle and the primo they are not very well suited for geometric type canes they are more suited for organic type canes like the ones that are done by uh, um, tiny pandora teresa salgado or my own you know that i'm more into organic looking 
type gains. But anyway, at this point, and do I want to make it thinner? Uh, maybe just a pinch. At this point, the idea is that it's not wide enough. <laughs> I need to make it a little bit wider. Hold on. Give me just a little bit. Because I really want you to be able to see what I'm doing. I'm going to extend it a bit. There's not a lot of room to do the diagonally thing. Uh, but yeah, and talking about making um, Easter egg uh, baking um, forms. Who does she live? Oh, thank you. Where I live in Oklahoma. Um, in order to make a very good uh, baking form, for a, uh, an Eastern egg, if you don't want to go through all the bother of, you know, there's Unruly Housewife showed very nicely and very hilariously at one point how you can use an actual egg, a raw egg, to cover it in polymer clay for Easter and all that. And the idea is that you poke holes at both ends and then you kind of poke to to break the the yolk i think and then you blow on one end to clean the whole um egg of the content and then of course you wash it you disinfect it and you let it dry and you can use it as a base to to put polymer clay on it and then bake it and all that now if you don't want to go through all that trouble what you can do is, and it's a lengthy process, that's why I didn't make it, uh, I, I I was thinking of uh, showing you how, but then I was like, it's, it takes too long, it's impossible to show that in a live video, maybe I'll make a separate tutorial at one point. But the idea is you can make it with papier mache, but the problem is that you uh, don't use the regular uh, papier mache paste because the regular papier mache paste has glue in it. So once you bake it, it's going to get uh, tough and it's impossible for it to dissolve in water anymore. The best thing is to get some cheapo toilet paper and then just let it a little bit in water to almost dissolve, then squeeze the water out of it. And use some of those um, uh, plastic eggs, you know, after it's well, well squeezed, uh, to mold it. And then let it dry. And once you have it molded and dried, cover it with aluminum foil. And then when you cover it with the polymer clay, make sure you leave at least one little hole. Once you're done baking, if you watched my uh, pods, organic pods tutorial, I show exactly how to do this kind of stuff. Once it's baked, all you have to do is to kind of poke the hole through the aluminum foil and then put the whole concoction in water and leave it for an hour or two and you can go from time to time with the crochet or a knitting needle of sorts to break up the toilet paper that's going to start dissolving in water. And then you only need to be a little bit patient because uh, once it starts dissolving, you can take it out completely. And uh, then you can pull out with the crochet the pieces of uh, aluminum foil as well. And then you'll have a hollow polymer clay egg. Or if you want, you can just keep it on the... Uh, homemade papier mache and aluminum foil and you don't have to hollow it out. Uh, it's good to be hollow when you want to make the um, lace type covering, 
you know, the one where you use just strings and flowers and you leave a lot of um, empty spots between them, that's a good way to uh, get a baking form for it. Okay, I think that this should be much better. And all I have to do is to lengthen it up a little bit. Uh, don't I'm, I'm going to say it real quick in French. Uh, donc, si vous voulez uh, faire une base pour uh, cuire des, des œufs de Pâques couverts en pâte polymère, uh, vous pouvez le faire avec du, du papier toilette que vous uh, mettez dans l'eau et ensuite vous faites une forme d'œuf. Vous pouvez utiliser ces œufs, œufs en plastique pour uh, faire une, bête, une, 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 une meilleure forme et ensuite pour la couvrir avec euh, de, de la feuille aluminium et quand vous couvrez l'œuf si vous voulez euh, le faire euh, creux alors vous vous laissez un petit trou et après que vous le, vous le cuissez euh, vous le mettez dans l'eau euh, la le papier toilette va dissoudre et vous allez euh, être capable de, euh, de le faire sortir avec une petite euh, aiguille ou quelque chose. Et ensuite aussi, vous pouvez euh, faire le, le papier aluminium. Euh, on dit, mais ça seulement si vous voulez de faire des œufs en dentelle. Sinon, vous pouvez laisser le, la base dedans. You need to tell us exactly what kind, Teresa. Bonsoir, Karine. You really need to tell us what kind and I'm going to post it on the... Facebook page so people know because I'm sure that with the Easter coming everybody would love to know and look at me I've been fiddling with this for half an hour now <laughs> Okay, now let me not go much farther because I'm going to start losing my little lines. But the whole idea is that what you do, see how you have this. Oui, Dominique, c'est ce que j'ai dit que un Rully Housewife a un tuto comme ça en utilisant un, un œuf. Non, ça n'abîme pas la polymère, Cécile. Ça, ça dure un peu, mais ça vaut la peine. So uh, what Dominique says, said was what I forgot to finish my thing about the, the tutorial by Unruly Housewife is how at the end when you use the, um, the raw egg uh, after you're done, if you have the lace-like type, you put it in vinegar and it takes a while, but in the end the, um, the shell will dissolve and you're left with just the polymer clay and it does not harm the polymer clay. Now, try to get the same angle. I wouldn't go all the way like this, better more like this. And cut the, usually the way that I do it, I don't do it with a square. I take more of a rectangle and I take the middle. I calculate the middle 
and this and the opposite edge and then I go down once then see I have the middle here and this other edge but you already have one line so you can and then you get one more in the middle and now you can go on the sides as well and you know what follows next right I'm going to gently separate them. So I don't distort them much. And we just turn them. So you saw what I did? So it was like this. And all you have to do is to Turn it upside down and then try to match the, remember always on the front and the back, try to match the, the lines. And then the same on this side. Now, if you notice, I did put this here, but I'm not going to leave it here. If you notice, there's a... You pretty much have... See, this can come up here. If you can cut it properly. But you can also generally use the these other ends if they match. You can cut a little bit more. These were the end caps, end canes, pretty much. But at this point, you will have your diagonal cane. And see how the, I don't know if the, camera can show it how the pistachio is brought into valor by the sunshine yellow and i'm trying to make this thing focus there you go see it's practically not really noticeable with the naked eye and i didn't match them perfectly here but once you, if you don't put this, it will not look pop out so much. Now, don't worry, we are going to use these for something. And as I said, let's first make ourselves a little egg base so we can make a little egg, right? Because that's why. So this is just plain paper napkin. Oh, 
sorry. I thought I brought the aluminum foil and it was just another <laughs> roll of wax paper that I had brought. Now, did you know this? I know it's an old thing, but not a lot of people know. On this, if you press here, if you can press there, I see how it's got two little flaps. When you press it in, it's going to hold your roll so it wouldn't jump out when you grab your stuff. And you want, generally for these kind of things, you always want the poor quality aluminum foil, the one that's exceptionally thin. You don't want the good quality thick one. I get these ones from the Dollar Tree or from Winco because they are very cheap, but if it's too thick, it's not going to bend properly, you know. That's why you don't want good quality aluminum foil. And then you just wrap your little bowl of toilet paper. Sorry for the noise. Oh, toilet paper. Oh. Paper towel. And you might need several layers. And it depends on how big you want your little egg to be. But first you make your shape. So it would be fairly sturdy and it wouldn't give too much. And then you grab a second. Uh, le papier aluminum très fin, ça veut dire de très pauvre qualité. Parce qu'en général, la bonne qualité, c'est épais. Et c'est pas ce que vous voulez. Okay, now on the second, as I'm going to actually wrap it, I'm going to be a little bit more careful on how I wrap it. So first you go like this. Then you do this. And the same on this side. Almost like if you were wrapping a present. Okay. And remember, you don't have to use all of it. Use exactly how much you need. But in this case, I'm good with pretty much all of it. Round up the any corners you might have. And if you have better hands than mine, then mine it's easier. Now, your next problem will be that Polymer clay doesn't stick to aluminum foil very good. And uh, this is a trick that's used a lot by the doll makers because the best way to do when you do an art doll is to do a wire armature that you then cover in aluminum foil. That's really good pack because that way the clay gets baked from the inside as the aluminum foil gets heat it up, but the problem is to make the polymer clay adhere properly and not move around on the aluminum foil. So what you use is actual masking tape. If you can find it, because I just worked with it. It's somewhere here. This comes from working on several projects at the same time. Oh, God, I 
just a set of commands. All right, that's great. I misplaced my masking tape. It's somewhere. And now you cannot use any other kind of tape, only uh, painter's tape, masking tape, the one that's uh, paper. I might have to go without it. Oh, well. So, as I said, I cannot find it, but just wrap the whole thing in masking paper. And then you can use the scrap clay. That would be your first thing. Scrap clay. First, use a thin layer so you can pretty much even out the bad spot spots yeah i just happen to have green scrap clay <laughs> i don't know why and sometimes my scrap clay is colored as specific colors And see how now it's all bumpy and lumpy from the aluminum foil underneath. And it's fine because we are going to even it out. If you need a little bit more, then by all means, grab a little bit more scrap clay. No, it's not from Malachite. I think it was from the Shamrock. Okay, I got some brown scrap clay now. the regular brown. And I'm going to just place it, not all of it, but see where I have some dips and folds. And it doesn't take too long to, to make a pretty even egg shape for baking and that definitely saves on the whole egg thing I mean on emptying an egg and all that And as I said, it's much better when you have the masking tape on it.
here. Yeah, camouflage egg, yeah. Kinda, it is, isn't it? A little bit looks like it. See how it comes off in spots. I think I'm going to wrap it in a little bit more. Why do I never find my stuff? Okay, and what I'm going to do is to cut triangles out of this. eyeballing of course not but that's enough and then the same thing on this this is called not seeing your scissors trick as I've been trying to bring everything back from the kitchen here because I had a lot of stuff in the kitchen and then a lot of stuff here which works fine when I have to do pieces for myself but whenever I do tutorials or lives that doesn't work anymore okay so now we got a little bit of a thicker Hi, Anne. Okay, ideally, you want to bake this before you start um, covering it up. And of course, you want to make it a little bit more pointy towards one end. As I said, it's much easier to do if you have those little plastic eggs and you can shape your paper in them and let them dry overnight or once they got shaped, just put them in the oven for a little bit so they can harden up. And let's, let's consider it good enough. <laughs> Amber? Hi, Amber. Okay. So this is just to show you how to do things. Generally, this you use to make um, little wrapping lines. 
okay so we'll put this aside for lines let's make a little flower first so i'm going to grab this these are remember these are the leftovers from cutting up the squares of those and it's okay if they have a few threads of pistachio through them I'm going to make a, a little snake And let's roll it up in wisteria. I got all this wisteria here, which is not very straight. And there we go, it's a piece that's straight. And once we wrap it, let's pinch it on one end of the log. And gently reduce it a bit. Make a little triangle. Okay, Dominique. Okay, so now I made a little triangle with the also 80s. And I have my teardrop thing. And let's grab a little snake of pistachio. Because a lot of when I asked uh, yesterday, was it yesterday or the day before? What can we do? on the live so I don't have to talk all the time. And everybody was like elements of canes that can be put together in different ways. So I'm going to do this in three first. And see how the, I hope my camera can show. Remember I did not mix, I just let those little strips being there see how the whole petal has little dots of that pistachio I'm placing one little triangle here and one little triangle here.
And we miss something here, don't we? What we miss is another little triangle on each side. So let's put it there before we do anything because I forgot to put one on one end. got a little flower. What did you fix? Oh, you fixed the name. Well, yeah, I think that they are very good colors for uh, Easter. As long as they are a lot like um, candy colors, they are very good for Easter stuff. And you can, and I'm sure that at your expertise, you can try the more advanced one, Cecil. I think you're past the beginner one. But yeah, Amber, that's called using the other channel. Because once you have you have one username with Google, but then you can create, I don't know if as many channels as you want, but you can create several channels and then you can log in with whichever of the channels you want. So yeah, it's easily fixable. Okay, so we have a little flower cane now. You want to try a little bunny cane? Yeah, you can find a lot of tips and tricks online. I think that Moclay has a really cool bunny cane thing. Let's see what else can we use. Let's just use a plain um, teardroppy thing i'll show you in a minute so first we we make a log we'll use the white this is another egg specific thing then let's make another log using the yellow Hopefully, Amber, and hopefully by next week I can talk better and longer. So try to make them fairly equal. I 
I'm trying not to get too distracted because you know how, how I can go from one subject to the other so easily. Okay, so we have one white and one yellow log. Okay. Now let's take one so it is one Just that I needed this to be about the same uh, size. So I'm going to get one of each of these. I'm going first to cut this pretty much. It needs to be this length. And the same with the wisteria. Now the pistachio, I'm going to actually thin it out just a bit. And then cut two. Oops, sorry. And we are going to get one wisteria, one pistachio. And see the pistachio is just slightly thinner than the other two. Then the wisteria, the um, soetis and the pistachio. And then at the end of this, I will show you something really neat. By what I can see and how soft it is, I would think Primo or Cernet. Sometimes it looks like Cernet, definitely. And then I'm putting them together. Now I have this and I have this, right? It's going to require a little bit of convincing to make these bend properly. But place one here and place one here. Very, very easy line to make. I don't know, sometimes it looks like Cernit because it seems to be so soft, Cecile. That's why I said 
that it might be Cernit. Definitely in some, sometimes she uses Primo, but I don't think she uses something. It might be female soft. Who knows? Do they still make female soft? And it doesn't look like a firm clay, by no means. But yeah, you're right. She makes everything look super easy. It's really neat. And of course, you reduce it to a more egg-sized, appropriate oops, size. So it might be female soft. Okay, now we have a line like this. That is very Eastern egg, East, Easter egg-ish. Can we already dress an egg with what we have? I think that we can. As the first thing would be to put one thing right here. And we can use this one for the middle. Stripe. And of course you can use these in, you can make several of these in different combinations of colors. And also another way you can do it is to just make stripes like this and then place little flowers like this. There are so many ways you can, um, yeah, it is almost psychedelic. But see, the thing is that my camera doesn't show how uh, actually warm these colors are. And they are not cold. They look much colder on the camera. They look like, to me, they look like fondant, honestly. So, we have some of this. Let's roll it a little longer. Because we are not aiming for something looking super geometrical and super perfect. We are looking for something fun and childlike. Okay. That's why I chose these colors. Let's see if we have enough. We just might, if I stretch it a little bit. Oops, if I stretch it to the point that I can pull it apart. <laughs> Hi, Catherine. Shalom. Hi, Suzanne. I didn't even notice you, sorry. Again, if I didn't say hi to somebody who came on the chat when I was, wasn't looking, 
Excuse me. I'm not always watching the chat. Okay, so I guess it came up pretty good, pretty even. Now what we can do, we can just take a strip of this. I know, I know, I'm not supposed to stretch like that. <laughs> Close enough. And we are going to place this on top of the on top of this I'm sure that your kids would love to do something like this. And again, it won't this one won't look that good because it's not made perfectly egg shaped. As I said, you can do it with the if you do the long longer lasting, longer taking shape for baking eggs and now you can take a few Somebody would make, you know, metal eggs that we can bake on. And then next you can do a line of this. Now to best do a line of this, uh, what do you mean? A ruler, this is a ruler. This would be an X-Acto knife. These are blades. This is, uh, you can go on my website because I, I started uh, writing a few articles on what I use. This is a, um, what do you call it, rigid blade. This is a, an Amaco. And in the articles on my website, I give links from where I buy this stuff. Then these are some absolutely awesome flexible, semi-flexible blades that are the, the blades that cut the best 
the canes that I have found to date. And I found these on Amazon, but they were from a vendor from China. So they were taking like six weeks to get here. And then I told Trish from Polyclay Play about them and she was able to bring them. So you can find them now in Polyclay Play Store. And she has them long like this and then she has some shorter ones. Just be very careful because uh, they come in um, these plastic boxes. So they come in plastic boxes like this and they are super, super, super sharp. So whenever you open the box to take them out, be very careful not to cut yourself because as I said, they are exceptionally sharp. But because of that and because they are so fine and so sharp, you can cut slices that are like, I don't know, one tenth of a millimeter. That's why I said that they are the best. And, you know, I have issues with my hands when it comes to slices. But with these, I'll show you. So this is my old slice, the slicer. It's not the new one. Hold on, if I can hold on to them. Okay. See, it's almost transparent. It's so thin. You can cut with it. Yeah, I know you got some. Yeah, they are absolutely fabulous. I, as I said, I have not found another blade that works so good on uh, cutting canes. And you know, I'm people who know me know me that if it's crap, I'll tell you it's crap. I have absolutely no issues with that. So let's cut, let's do the same thing as for the micro caning. Let's cut one inch, three one inch, one, one centimeter pieces from this so we can cut a better line. And then put these together nicely and once we got them together then we can cut much better lines from them so i'm going to use again the super slicer I think that's how we should call this super slicer. See how beautifully it has cut. So we can start gently coercing the, manipulating it a little bit to fit. around no, I'm going away I know exactly those are exceptional yeah Catherine as I said if you go on my website I have a whole bunch of uh, I didn't write everything yet but I have a whole bunch of information on what I tried what I used what was good what was not good God, believe me, for example, until I found Trish at Polyclay Play, I had a lot of bad experiences ordering online. And 
I talk about it because I would wouldn't want others to have to go through what I did. Because generally when you spend over a hundred dollars on clay, you don't like to hear also what if you're upset that we are not shipping it right away. We have other customers. What, the clay? No. Polymer clay does not have a, a shelf life. I have an, an uh, article about that too. It can become less flexible, but if you look on the channel, I actually made the Pardo con conditioning where I'm conditioning a package of clay that's like 10 years old. And it's just fine. The only time that clay can get messed up is if it was stored at temperatures that are too high and they are ha it's half baked. But to become, it can be brought back to life just by conditioning. The best way to condition it is to, if it's very, very hard, and if we are not talking pardo, because pardo is a little bit different, uh, if you're talking about any regular clay, so you saw what I did here, I just cut a slice of the flour and I uh, flattened it bigger. Um, what you do, you just get a grater. You'll need a grater and a um, food processor and some clay softener. I never advise to use baby oil or, st or Vaseline or stuff like that because it changes the texture of the polymer clay and the way you can finish it and all that. Always use clay softener. Or if you don't have clay softener, a little bit of liquid clay. But all you have to do is to just grate the old clay and then put it in the food processor. Buy those cheap 7 or $8 food processors because they go bad after a while anyway. And put it in the food processor with a few drops of clay softener. Pulse it a few times and then once you get it out, you just put like this and then just flatten it to make pancakes. And then you'll, you should be able to roll it a couple times and go with it through the pasta machine. And that should be it. Okay, so now we covered all of it. And all we have to do now is to nicely flatten it. But again, it, this one's not very well egg shaped. I explained how to do the base for baking. And Teresa, you need to message me the, um, what you want to call it, the kind of plastic eggs that you found that they are good for baking. They stand baking. And I'll put them up on the page. Okay, and I said that before this is over, because we are getting close to the point where I won't be able to talk anymore, I will show you something really neat. And that is how to make a quick and easy psychedelic, if you want, cane. Yeah, that's all that is. It's for it to not to be half-baked. Otherwise, it lasts for decades. It can be brought to life. The only thing is that if it's fresher, it's easier to condition. That's the only, practically the only thing. But, you know, when you talk easier to condition, a six years old packet of Primo is easier to condition than a fresh packet of Fimo Professional or Keto. So it's all... relative to the brand to the to a lot of stuff okay so this would be an easter egg and very easy to make now let me show you that thing that i said i was going to show you let me make just a couple of quick jelly rolls skinner blend jelly rolls so i'm going to use this white with a pinch of wisteria and 
then some yellow or the pinch of so 80. Some pistachio with a pinch of wisteria, which is going to look interesting. And some so 80 with a pinch of wisteria. <laughs> oh, come on. Okay, so I'm going to make these Skinner blends real quick, even if they won't be perfectly perfect. Just excuse the noise for a few minutes. One more. This is how to make a very, very tropical kind of looking cane, if you want. And I call it the squishing game cane. So, you see, I have all the Skinner blends here. Yeah, that was crazy. 
the shipping is horrible at this point in time. I really need to find correspondence in Europe. But see, it's the same for me. I have to, that's why I said I'll probably make Cecile my representative. Yeah, if she would have sent the powders in little bags, then it would have been an envelope and those are cheaper. Okay, now if you notice, all my colors are very tropical forest looking like. Almost like tropical flowers, orchids. And actually this one I'm going to get it one more time through the machine. I should have gone gotten it a little bit. And this is all you have to do. And you can do it. It works better with happy colors. And then with the other colors, but you can do it with whenever you make something and you have a little bit of color of this and a little bit of color of that. You can make combine them and make Skinner blends and then do this. The squish game cane. Thing. That you don't have to think about anything. You just make these. Jelly roll. Skinner blend jelly rolls. Okay, so I have four. You can have more than four, but I have four. Right? So what I'm doing going to squish them. Okay, and then I'm going to cut in half and backward, put one, turn one back. Then now I have this. Okay, and now I'm going to make a triangle, and the direction you make your triangle doesn't really matter at all. You just triangularize your little squishy pile. You triangularize it and you reduce it. No, thank you. But yeah, this is how you can make a just plain simple squish game cane. So now I'm going to reduce it so I can cut it in four. Or of course you can reduce it so you can cut it in six if you want. But remember go against the working surface. So you don't lose too much clay. And see how soft it gets. This is what Primo does for caning. Uh, 
Okay, and let's cut it in four now. And it's a pretty tropical cane. That's why I said it looks prettier when you do it with happy colors than when you do it with other colors. Yes, that can go on an egg as well. But this is a good way to use your scraps. Kill Pat, Dominique. And then, of course, you can remember I showed you how you can deform and reshape a cane and do all kinds of stuff. Let me cut this one so you can see the slice on it. But, yeah, and it looks almost like, it will always look like a, a little bit like a stained glass. But this is why I said you don't have to worry about planning anything. Just get whatever you have left over. Do a few Skinner Blend jelly rolls. Then put them together, smoosh them. And then make a little triangle and start building your cane. And that's a smoosh game cane. <laughs> so... Yeah, the colors are really happy. I wish I had some um, turquoise, but I'm completely out of turquoise. I did all those Larimar experiments. You can do, so, okay, this is with the Wisteria, and I don't have a pink for Primo either. But in the Primo, you go with the Sunshine Yellow Wisteria, the pink, I forgot the color of the pink in Primo, I'd have to look. The Pistachio and the Turquoise. In the souffle, you go with the canary, the robin's egg, the, I think it's the turnip, the purple, and so 80s, and avocado. No, wasabi. Sorry, wasabi. One of them is pistachio, one of them is wasabi. Anyway, but these are perfect colors to use for Easter. They are absolutely awesome to use for Easter. Oh, patati patata, c'est ça le nom? Oh. C'est intéressant ça. But yeah, and you can do all kinds of, see how they work and they will always work together. It doesn't matter how you put them. If you use these four colors combined, they will always work together to make new designs that go well together. And you see, like this one, I can make it into a cane as well. It's an easy to make border, but you can easy make it into a cane as well. Okay, so wasabi is primo and pistachio is souffle. I'm sorry. I should have remembered Teresa Salgado because she's with the wasabi. I use wasabi because I just like to say wasabi. <laughs> and I thought that's so cute. But yeah, see how just with these four colors and th then of course you can interspeed, um, put a little bit of white in there just to lighten up the mood even more. But just with these four colors, you can make so many combinations and so many um, um designs that would work wonderful on an Easter egg. Okay. Okay. All righty. So at this point, I am a little bit uh, starting to get hurting 
So I've been up for like an hour and 45 minutes. So I think I'm going to say goodbye and wish you a great Sunday. And hopefully next Sunday I'll feel better. And I'm tomorrow I'm supposed to go to the doctor. So they are going to do imaging to see what the heck is going on with my jaw. Hopefully I didn't break it. Because we don't know. I have a completely numb spot on my chin. That's the the main issue. And the pain was horrendous. So, okay. Yes, I did. I did. Okay. Thank you so much for being here with me. And I hope you have fun making Easter stuff. Have a wonderful Sunday. What's left of it. Thank you. Goodbye.